Hey guys, David Len here. Len's going to show us his copy of what is this Wellington's this Victory. Victory by Decision Games. This is the recent edition. They republished it a few years ago, and actually, this is one of those where they improved the rules. They made it a lot simpler, which is very important because you have a format thing. This is for the real serious people, and uh, it, it part of the appeal of the Napoleonic era. There's several reasons why the Napoleonic era is like one of the most popular. First of all, it had 20 years of warfare, plenty of battles. Napoleon alone led battles in 31 different battles, so he contributed. Plus, there are also other um, battles that were important. It was worldwide. They fought in uh, deserts, uh, forests, and mountains. And also, this is a, in the Black Powder era, this is when armies were at their best. There were, you know, even the, the below average officers were at least adequate. And everybody kind of knew their way. There was a, one person remarked at the Battle of Waterloo, some, a lot of the British divisions had 150 years of glory before this battle even started. So, uh, both sides knew what they were doing. And also, actually, one thing that uh, uh, Napoleonics also favors is that you have all the colorful uniforms. Actually, in miniatures, this comes through much better. And even though I have to admit, I never cared much for strategic Napoleonic era. Because in the strategic era, it, was, it seemed like it was more of a matter of does Austria stay neutral or join the alliance against the French? So, but, uh, so, and also one thing that uh, another appeal of Napoleonics was that um, the technology was approximately the same. All the muskets were the same, all the artillery was the same. It was a matter of leadership, morale, tactics, organization that made a difference. Not who had the cannons that shot the furthest and things like that. So, and which uh, appeals to a lot of people. So. So, if you get a chance, uh, try Napoleonics. I know, probably, actually, the disadvantage of Napoleonics, you tend to get a lot of counters. And uh, it does take a while to play. How many scenarios have you played in this one? I played one so far, like uh, one of those smaller ones. I had a uh, French unit, they were, the Prussians were marching on the map. And they had to prevent the Prussians from moving past this ridge. Gotcha. Yeah, because if the Prussians uh, made it, they would end up here. And then from there, they would be behind the French lines. This reminds me a little bit of, uh, what is that, War in the Pacific? I think it is. I had a copy of that. I never played it. It was the biggest game I ever had. Uh, this isn't quite as big. I mean, this is a big game, but this looks a lot more manageable than uh, War in the Pacific, and you don't need a lifetime to play it. because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I played that scenario, it actually was very quick. And I found out that the, uh, this is one of those games where sometimes reading the rules is harder than playing it. So does your scenario use all four maps or just one of them? Just one of them. Oh, that's yeah. cool. And there's a few other smaller scenarios. Because uh, there's one for the Battle of Placiant. And then there's one for the cavalry charge over here. Mm. How's the complexity of the rules? Uh, I'm more on the simpler side? or It's on the simpler side. The original edition had a very complex system. They had one of these turn sequences where like infantry moves, French infantry moves, and British cavalry, then uh, Prussian artillery or something like that. This one is a plane. One side moves, the other side moves. And... They also have uh, advanced rules for like command points, so not everything's moving at once. So cool. Where'd you get this? Uh, did you get it at Little Wars? No, nah, I, I think I ordered this through the mail. Oh, okay. Uh, during the last uh, couple of years when I was working, I got a lot of a lot of overtime, so I was ordering these big box games, thinking to myself, when I retire, I get a chance to play them. <laughs> Uh, problem I got with this right now is that I don't have the space, but maybe in a year or two I'll get around to it. So, 
Okay, like I said, give uh, Napoleonics a chance. It'll be enjoy it, but it may take a while. All right, thanks, Len. Hey guys, Len wanted to mention some um, Napoleonic Wars books in this video. Uh, we just remembered now, so here he goes. Okay, uh, first one is uh, on the Fields of Glory. This is a uh, book about the battlefield, and he's very good and providing contemporary maps and present-day maps showing uh, differences of uh, the landmarks in the battlefield. If you ever uh, visit the Waterloo Battlefield, I recommend getting this first to read about it. Plus also he highlights a lot of parts uh, of the battle that most people look over, like uh, Grucci's March to Va Waver. And also, believe it or not, the day after the battle, Grucci's fighting a battle against the Prussians and mm -hmm. holding his own. So, you know, he, Napoleon tends to uh, downgrade Gucci, but he, he did what he was supposed to do. He was just following orders. Of course, after the uh, war, he uh, fled to Philadelphia, uh, <laughs> where uh, Louis Napoleon, incidentally, was uh, living. And they both became life, lifelong Flyers fans. And this is the classic book where all your history about Waterloo tends to come out of. Uh, Major Saborn interviewed practically every uh, British officer involved in this battle. So this was written by uh, an author who was alive during this time period. Yeah. That's one of the advantages of Waterloo has over other victories is uh, other battles that the war ended and a lot of the participants lived to talk about it. He tends to uh, not mention the Dutch and Belgium forces or the Prussians or only in passing. And I, for years I want to get it, but when I looked on the site, so they're selling it for 50 to $100. I got this for $10 at half price. Price. Nice. So, oh, $9.99, so $10. So it, it, there are many books on the Napoleonic era and the Battle of Waterloo, but if you are pressed for money, these are the two I would recommend. All right, thanks, Len.